In this video, you are going to learn how to launch your Elevar data layer and the fully managed server-side tracking with your source and destination configurations. Before jumping into the server-side settings, we first need to install the site-wide data layer to your Shopify theme and set up your GTM web container with our base container, tags, triggers, and variables. Inside your data layer settings, you'll see a few steps to walk through the process, which only takes a couple of minutes. One is going to be selecting the events that you want enabled, which most of the time you'll have all of these selected. Then we'll walk through the process of removing any pre-existing GTM code that you might have on your website, and then ensuring that we have your checkout set up with the additional data layer. If you are a Shopify Plus store, or if you have the checkout.liquid template enabled in your theme, then you do not need to take any additional steps. Otherwise, if you are a non-plus store and don't have access to your checkout.liquid, then we will provide a code block that you will copy and paste from here, or copy from your Elevar settings and paste into your order status page settings here. Then the next two steps will be configuring your GTM web container. So there is step one, which is gonna be the base container we provide that's available in the pre-built tags. So this is going to have all of the triggers and variables that are needed for all of the additional destinations that you'll be adding, either that map to your server-side destinations, or that might be additional like a Pinterest or TikTok or other channels in your web container. Once you import the base container, you will see a list of triggers, such as an add to cart or product view or purchase, and then variables that are associated to these. For example, on an add to cart event, you might have tags that require the product name or the product price, etc. That's what the base container includes. Then the next step will be downloading the relevant channels or web containers such as the Facebook and conversion API. So remember when you set up the server-side conversion API for Facebook, you also need to configure the client-side tracking, which is done through Google Tag Manager as well. And then with Universal Analytics, we also have a related web container that runs uh, along with your server-side destination. And then you'll see all the other channels here that you can download and import. Once you've gone through the process of downloading the relevant containers for your store. You simply import them into your GTM web container, and then you can go through the configuration for each one of these following the guides. This is your base Facebook setup. You'll see we have all of the standard events here. One quick call out here on the purchase event. So we have our event ID that has the variable of the order ID. This matches the server-side destination for the Facebook conversion API, and this is the deduplication parameter that Facebook will use because Facebook still wants you to send the pixel-based event in addition to the conversion API event. If you need to make any modifications to our base setup, for example, if, if you are using product SKU or vari variant ID as your content ID, you can make that change in addition to other configurations or customizations that you might want to do. So that's the Facebook setup, and I'll quickly show you the Google Analytics event. So this is the base container that you'll see inside your LLVAR dashboard. It contains all of the events in addition to a page view event, but it does not include the purchase event since the purchase event is actually running through the LLVAR fully managed destination. Once you are done with the web container setup, then it'll be time to install the data layer on your store. Once you go through the process of installing, you'll see that Elevar creates three snippets. You'll have an Elevar-head and an Elevar-body-end that are automatically implemented on your production theme and also set in your theme.liquid. And if you have the checkout.liquid, they're also set here. That's it. The data layer is live on your site and you can proceed with publishing in GTM, publishing the web container tags. If you do, just be sure that you remove any pre-existing tracking. So for example, the native Facebook Shopify app, if you are publishing your Facebook tags now, then be sure to disable your native Facebook tracking inside of Shopify to prevent duplicate tracking. 
Now it's time to move on to the server side destination. There's a couple source setups here we'll have to go through before configuring the destination. Number one is going to be the data layer listener. This is essentially all the non-purchase event data and this is very simple to install. You'll configure the checkout in the same way that you would with the data layer. So if you are non plus store, you'll see code here that you'll have to copy and paste into your order status page settings here. Otherwise, if you are on Shopify plus, this will automatically create another snippet inside your Shopify theme and the checkout that liquid template. Once I install, this particular source is done and we can verify inside your Shopify theme. Again, by reloading the production theme, you'll see we have the Elevar head listener. This has been added to both the theme, the checkout.liquid as well as the theme.liquid. The next step is going to be the webhook installation. So this is what allows us to manage all of your purchase conversion tracking outside of the browser. So the webhook is installed on your store and that listens for any order creation, draft order creation, etc. And then those events are then routed to the different destinations. And this is a great way to ensure that we keep that 95, 99% order accuracy because we are running everything server to server from your Shopify admin to the Facebook conversion API. So this step again, is pretty simple. Just click install on store and that's done. So now we've installed a webhook on your store. Now it's time to move on to the two de destinations here. First one is the Google Analytics destination. And this will walk through step by step. We do check to see if you've downloaded the pre-built universal anal analytics container. If you've downloaded this, then you're good to go. If you already had tags inside your GTM web container, you can continue. This is just a reminder that you, uh, you will still need your, your tracking in the web container for all the non-purchase events. So this is, is walking through your purchase event configuration that's being handled and run through that webhook setup. All right, so now we're, we're just gonna walk through step by step. So selecting what events, what transaction identifier, so order name or order ID, What's your product identifier inside of GA? So for most, it's gonna be product SKU. Then we'll get into the customization options that you have. So this allows you to customize by blocking some transactions. For example, if you have a point of sale channel or wholesale channel or an edit order channel or anything else that you can potentially see inside your Shopify admin here, that you do not want sent to Google Analytics. This will allow you to do that. So you can select the different channels here from our list of default, or if you have a channel that's not listed, you can enter that channel code here. And we do show how to find that in this full guide and full setup for Google Analytics. So for this example, we'll just pretend that I have a point of sale channel that I wanna block and we'll save and continue. So essentially what's happening is instead of that point of sale channel order and all the orders under point of sale going to Google Analytics, we're just blocking them and not sending those orders at all. Next up is going to be our subscription subscription product setup. If you do not have subscription products, you can just continue. If you do, then we give you a few different options to set this process up as well. If you are a recharge customer, then essentially what we are doing is looking at that recurring uh, subscription order. So the order tag that is set in all of your rec recurring orders. And we're allowing you to do one of three things. Number one, if you want to block all recurring orders, just select block. Number two, if you want to send all recurring orders to Google analytics and utilize the original attribution from the first order, so if a customer placed their first subscription order coming in from paid search and you want the second, third X number of orders to also come into GA with paid search, you can just send all of those transactions and leave this set with the original order attribution. Otherwise, if you want to customize the attribution, so let's say you want all of the recurring orders to go to Google analytics, but you want 
a custom source medium, then you can set that with the recharge recurring order and click save. Next up will be the UTM parameters that you would like to use for sending orders to Google Analytics. We have our first touch, which are essentially the UTMs that Shopify stores on, on the order. The next is the last touch. This is the UTM data that the Elevar data layer stores in a data layer. And this is what's updated every if a user comes back to the site with multiple UTMs. We'll update those UTM parameters uh, every time that that is updated for that particular user. This video and in the guide for the setup goes into much more granular detail between the setting, but this is an option that you can control and you can change this at any given time. Last but not least in the setup is going to be our property IDs that we configure here. And these will be the same property IDs that you'll configure inside your web container as well. So we'll take our property ID and our GA4 ID and set that. And these again should match if we pop over to our web container and go to our variables. So you'll see we have our tracking ID, which is set. And this is the ID that you would set when you're downloading that pre-built container, or you can modify this directly in GTM itself. So just to show that right here. So again, we have our GA property ID matches the variable that we have set to the tags inside all of our, our inside the web container here. So this is our add to cart and our page view, et cetera. There is a GA4 secret that you can use in your advanced settings here. And we'll just put in a test secret here. So this guide will show how to grab that secret inside your GA4 settings. Um, for now, <clears throat> we'll continue and confirm that I have paused my purchase tag in GTM. Uh, the reason why we ask for this is just to ensure that you potentially did not have GA tracking set up in GTM where, where you were sending purchase data through your web container and now you are switching to a server side container setup. So this, we want to just ensure that you minimize any duplicate conversion tracking going to GA. Once I've checked this, I'm ready to go. We do offer some advanced options. Again, that the art of this full article and full guide for the analytics destination will walk you through setting this up. So if you wanted to block transactions or customize transactions from channel or other tags that you have, for example, let's use that point of sale example. If you wanted point of sale to go to GA as well, then you could input a custom source medium campaign. And then inside of analytics, you can create a filter to block out point of sale. So you could have potentially all of your Shopify transaction data in GA and then create different views to customize based on your needs. That's it for the Google Analytics destination. Again, in each one of these steps, we provide a video with a few more details in addition to the instructions. And that is it. So now we have our configuration all saved and we're ready to go live. And that's it. So I have now deployed my server side tracking destination for GA and I'm ready for Facebook next. So inside of Facebook, It'll be a very similar setup we just walked through. So we'll select the events that we want. One difference here is with Facebook, we are sending all potential events that you see here through the server side integration. And if you have subscriptions and you can send these additional events as well. By default, we are sending the purchase event through the webhook integration. So the purchase event is running through that direct webhook integration which means that all of your channels that you have available inside of Shopify, all of those orders can go to Facebook as well. Next up, we'll have the different content types and configurations that we looked at in the tags in your web container. So you can select your content type, your product ident identifier, and then the blocking transactions is really the same setup we just looked at with analytics. So if you wanted to block any of these channels from going to Facebook, you can do that as well. These subscriptions. So this will be a, a little bit different. So if you are sending, uh, if you do have subscriptions 
and you want to send your recurring orders to Facebook, you can do that or you can choose a block. And if you, if you are sending recurring orders to Facebook, then we are setting the action source type as a other, which is what Facebook defines for subscription products or subscription orders. So this is something that is in place or you can choose to block recurring orders. So you just send the first time order and the first time subscription order, send that to Facebook only and block everything else. Last but not least will be your pixel ID, which you can grab from your pixel events manager, your conversion API token, which we can grab from our settings. So this will be under the generate token under the conversion API settings. And then last but not least, you do have the additional options here to customize by channel. So if you wanted to block certain channels from going to Facebook or block by order tags, you can do that. And that's it. So now I'm ready to go live. So this will process all of your transactions. It doesn't matter if you have a Shopify checkout or an offsite recharge checkout or a cart hook or any others, all of your purchase data will go directly from your Shopify admin to Facebook once we are live and that's it. So at this point, once you are live, then your channel accuracy report will start to kick in and this ultimately helps monitor and alert you if any of your transactions. So if our source of truth is Shopify orders, we have a hundred orders in Shopify. If you fall below 95%, which you can adjust, then we will alert you and that's something that we monitor um, and ultimately email you if something does fall below that, that threshold. So that's it. You are now fully configured on server side tracking for GA and the Facebook conversion API. If you have any questions, please let us know.